Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, Jackie Ina. Check it, check it, check it, check it. Check it, 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 check it. The homies over at Too Faced just recently sent me a big old cute bag. Can I just say that they put this inside of a box and that was like enough for me. I just love the fact that they just kind of put the collection here and I get a really cool bag. I get to recycle and reuse. So basically in that bag was Too Faced's newest collection, the Tootie Free collection. I'm always surprised at like what you guys are interested in seeing. So today I'm going to be trying out the full range of a collection, which includes a foundation, some blushes, some cream liquid shadows, and there's also some fun all over face body products that we're going to be testing out and demoing today. One thing that I also am gonna start reiterating in my reviews, in my first impressions, if you are the type of person who watches reviews so that the person can confirm what you already think and feel about the product, brand, person, etc., my reviews are not for you. If you are the kind of person who jumps to reviews for someone to point and click and show you how to spend your money and you are not willing to put in the time and the additional research to read other people's reviews and thoughts on the products, my reviews are not for you. I'm here to share my perspective, my thoughts, based on my experience and so on and so forth about these products and hopefully you find this helpful. But I really don't like doing reviews and then feeling like I'm not afforded the ability to express my opinion freely and that's what I feel like reviews have become lately. It's like, you can't say this, you didn't do this right, you didn't swatch it with the, at a 90 degree angle, blah, blah, blah. Okay, take the camera then, here, here's the microphone, you do it. Anyway, we're gonna have fun, we're not even gonna worry about that. And by the way, make sure you subscribe. I see your mouse hovering over the subscriber button, I know you're thinking about it. Don't be a rebel, come on, do it. I already know you binge watched 15 of my videos today anyway. You might as well join the Jack Anna family. Don't be shy, we love you. I'm so glad that they gave me this info packet. Like, this thing is really gonna come through in the clutch. I really love these things because it kind of tells me like, what are the claims? Like, what is this product supposed to do? How am I supposed to use it properly? And then I can, you know, be the judge on whether or not it's BS or not. Normally, I would start with my base already done, but there's a foundation in this launch that I'm already kind of side-eyeing because let me be honest with you, the word do scares the crap out of me, Michael, Mary, and Susan. Okay, I'm just, just being honest, man. What am I gonna do with you? <laughs> Please stop. So this is their Do You Fresh Glow Foundation infused with juicy watermelon and fresh cucumber. Somebody go get the tahini. Stop playing. Back yard boogie boogie boogie. Back yard boogie boogie boogie. So the whole theme with this collection is like fun, fruits, all that fun. It's really cute. A lot of the stuff is scented. It's very youthful. It's very fresh, which was, again, why I was a little surprised that you guys requested it because I thought this would have been a little gimmicky for you guys, but Apparently a lot of you guys really like these fun collections. So the first product that we're gonna try out as I've already introduced is the Do You Full Coverage Fresh Glow Foundation. I don't mind a radiant finish. I don't even mind a finish that says it's got glow in it. I don't mind a natural finish. But Do is just a lot to commit to, you know what I mean? Like, do you really think you can handle the Do? Like, I don't think I'm ready for this jelly. Now it does, however, say that it is long wearing and it comes in 20 shades, non-comedogenic, and it's supposed to have a pearlescent effect. I'm not gonna lie, as a chocolate girl, that scares me. I'm all the way intimidated by this. So I have what I see are the darkest shades in this collection, and you already know we're gonna get right to the chase, man. Right now I'm leaning more on the reddish bronzier side. A lot of times people try to tell me what they think are my undertone, and I know that people mean well, but like you literally are not seeing me, like you just, you mean well, but you just don't know what you're talking about. You just have to kindly let people know, like, I got this, sis. I've been doing makeup for a while, and thank you, but no thank you. Normally, all year round, I'm like golden, golden yellow. So this is maple, chestnut, mahogany, toffee, and cocoa, the darkest color. I feel like this may be my color. Definitely, definitely feel like we went from, like, light skin to, like, medium dark. Like, there's definitely something missing here. You know what's also weird is... Do you see that? Do you see how that turns into a different color when you blend it out? That is freaking weird, dude. I've never in my presidential life ever seen that before. Initial reaction though is that the shades are okay. In relation to the rest of them, the super light, the light, medium, and then there's dark. No deep dark, so nothing for someone who is like Ducky's complexion. Yeah, like there's nothing here for like Naomi. We need something here. We need something for Naomi, you guys. Like, stop neglecting the deep, dark category. If we can get the ultra light, we can definitely hit that deep, dark. Let's get on that. Thank you. So here's Toffee, which I, this feels very balmy, by the way. 
It feels like I can definitely feel the moisture. It's described as golden. I'm not seeing golden at all. I'm seeing that this blends into my skin tone now really well, which tells me that it's probably a little bit more red. Let's see how full coverage, this full coverage foundation really is. So here's one pump of toffee, which really isn't that generous. So I guess we'll see where we end up. It does smell really good, I'm not gonna lie. And you guys know that I'm no stranger to scented cosmetics, but foundations are the one thing that I think are the exception because they just, it's just not necessary. Ooh, so far. Did you guys see how, fa how fast that spread out too? Oh, it smells so good though. It smells like fake watermelon candy. You know what I'm talking about. You know exactly the watermelon candy, like watermelon don't smell like that. We all know the real tea. This I think feels and looks a lot more like a medium coverage foundation more than it does full. All right, one more pump of toffee. We're going in. Not mad at the finish yet because I don't want to speak too soon. A lot of foundations, you know, they set nice. They look good when you first put them on. And then two hours later, girl, you don't look like, you know, dip your face in some damn chicken grease. And this is not the Orange County Fair. You need to leave, ma'am. You need to leave. You are activating our alarm systems with all your shine. It's nice, but I don't know if this is for me, y'all. Like with a full face of makeup. I don't know, girl. This is looking and feeling both in person and on camera more like a full coverage tinted moisturizer. To me, this is more like a skincare product more than it is like something that I would wanna wear with a full beat, you know? It's obviously doing what it says it's supposed to do. And that's why <laughs> this whole dewy thing is just really killing me. I was just hoping that it was more like a one size fits all kind of do and not like this kind of do. But now that I see what it's do, doing <laughs> i will definitely have to set this down with powder i already feel like it would be a problem area for me right around this area this area and my forehead i'm concealing using their born this way what's this called born this way multi-use sculpting concealer i'm gonna do like 50 percent of my face including setting my contour highlight and then powder this down. Then we will prepare the eyes because we've got some fun eyeshadow palettes to feature. I finished out the rest of my face like I normally do. I did my under eye concealer. I blended out my contour. I set everything with translucent powder. I wanted to see how this foundation looked, you know, with my normal environment. And I actually feel like it doesn't look too bad. Okay, so next what we've got are two eyeshadow palettes. Ooh, come through matching my nails. That was not even planned. I deserve a commission for that. So this palette is the Sparkling Pineapple Eyeshadow Palette. Yes. This is scented. Actually, I didn't smell a thing because that was really dramatic. <laughs> I like when shadows are scented. I don't mind it. And the color selection is actually really cute. This is the second eyeshadow palette from the collection. It's the Razzle Dazzle Berry Eyeshadow Palette. And it looks like this on the outside. It is also scented. It smells really good. This is more of a purple pinky palette. I do appreciate the fact that the palettes are both not ashy. There's actual colors that I can use in my skin tone and that I feel confident like I could create a full eye look with both of these palettes. But I'm not particularly fond of the strip layout just because it's sometimes really hard swishing your brush in there. Like she just needs a square or she just needs a circle, either or. Personal preference, it's not something that would deter me from using the shadows. I just thought I would mention it. Side note, oh my God, I forgot to show you guys this adorable picture that one of my followers made for me at my last meet and greet with Too Faced. Like how, look at what she did. This is so freaking cute. She came to my Atlanta meetup. I just thought that was really sweet and relevant to the video. Like this packaging is so cute. I love the shiny finish. I love the glitter and the pineapples are just really cute, fun, fresh, and youthful. Don't use this palette if you think pineapples belong on pizza, by the way, that is a rule. It actually says it. I saw it on the packaging. It says achieve a sexy eyeshadow look. Do not utilize if you put pineapples on pizza. It says it on the instructions, so stop playing. Anybody work backwards with their shadow? Like do y'all put the lid on first and then work your way to the crease? How does that work? I've gone through different stages of my makeup career. I've done the lid first. I've done the crease first. I've done it all, seen it all, heard it all, ate it all. You know, you can smell the shadows as you're blending this out. <laughs> I wanna know what Jared's personal connection is to scent. There has to be a reason why they've had the peach scented collections, the chocolate, like what, is it just fun? Is there any coincidence? I'm calling this eyeshadow look Jackie Ina not doing a halo eye for once challenge. How about that? And actually lay that color on first with a thick, shading brush first, then I'm gonna blend it out later. Then using the Zoeva 221 Soft Crease Brush, I'm gonna blend that out and diffuse it. Start sweeping that into my crease. 
so far it's blending out pretty good. It's weird how like I sit in front of literally two mirrors, but there's just nothing like a handheld getting smack dab in your face to see what the hell you're really doing. You guys know I like applying my lid colors with my finger. I'm gonna test out this green color, but why do I feel like, let me just see how it looks first. Oh. Oh girl. I'm gonna put on a brown base first to really bring out the brown in the shadows. For this step, I'm using the Laura Mercier Caviar Stick. These are super juicy, ooh. But they swatched really nicely, so I figured they'd be good for the job. You're hired, Ms. Mercier. Hopefully this will get it to look a little, okay. <laughs> I was really hoping this would get it to look a little bit more, like it would darken it up but it's really pretty. You don't even see the brown underneath. Like that's actually pretty good coverage from the shadow. This one is also from Zoeva, the 234. I really like this brush. Kind of start at the lash line and then start to soften as I work my way up. People just don't like green eyeshadow and I don't know why. All right, I really like this color. It's, sometimes I feel like this shade of green really can take your look to a whole different, like I was, I was, I was not trying to go in that direction, Barbara. This gold feels like a wet to, ooh, whew. That was an incredibly beautiful shadow to swatch. It almost felt like a wet, yeah, it's, it, it almost feels like cream to powder. What happens if we take a little bit just here? Almost kind of adding a pop of highlight. This would not be a Jack Anna look without an inner corner highlight. It's just not gonna happen at all. Period. 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 So I'm gonna take this color here, this pinky champagne. When I tell you I'm putting a little bit of the shadow, I mean like bloop, and then right there. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. I don't want no troubles, officer. And then we're gonna pop that in the tear duct. This collection also comes with a limited edition Better Than Sex mascara that's all glitterfy and really cute. This better not be waterproof. Pop this on before putting on my falsies. Such a classic timeless formula. The brush head's incredible. It's just amazing. I freaking forgot to put shadow on my bottom lash line. First, I'm gonna sweep that crease color down there. I'm gonna layer the dark brown in there too, but we laid down the crease color first so that it's soft and not too harsh. I'd like to put some of that green on my bottom lash line, just mainly in the inner corner, like inner tear duct area. So right up in here. Now we can go back to mascara. I am gonna throw on my falsies. They're the Fluff Lash from Whiplash. I know you can't see it, but I'm gonna put them on shortly. Do you guys remember that episode of Fresh Prince when Uncle Phil came downstairs wearing that stupid looking hat and then Jeffrey was making fun of him and just looks at him and goes, a wop baba loo wop a wop bop. <laughs> I look like little Richard, attorney at law. <laughs> Dinner is served. A wop baba loo ba ba That's the kind of tease this collection has given me. In this collection, there are also these really beautiful like shimmer glitter sticks. They are liquid glitter eyeshadows. Guava glitz, ooh, ooh, that's pretty, ooh. This color is Sweet Spot. I was expecting these to not be as watery, that they're very watery, not necessarily in a bad way though. Instead of like chunky and thick and creamy, they're more like a sheer wash of glitter. This is citrus. <laughs> Citrus Mistress, she's giving us orange, tangerine, bronzy vibes. This is Ice Queen upon really looking at it first, like first impressions, not really a fan. And even swatched, not really a fan of that color. It's a weird, it's a funky color teal. This is Lemon Zest. This actually reminds me a lot of what's already on my eyes. That's kind of a pretty color. It's like a lime gold that's a nice zesty color upon first looking at them i was expecting there to be like steela vibes like i was expecting her to give me you know like a, a metallic spread situation but it's not that at all it's glitter this color is macchiato madness it's a rusty oh that's not the color i was expecting to see we got honey please and this is a very icy rose gold color we're getting into my arm hair, don't judge. And last but not least, we have strawberries and champagne. That's such a cute name. Don't know if I'm a fan of the color yet. Oh, you know what, that's actually not bad. When I saw these, like I said, I was expecting them to be a lot like the cream 
the liquid shadows from Stila. And then when I saw that they were glitters, I was like, oh. Mm -hmm. I think there's definitely some use for these. I do think that they're pretty if you love glitter. It's an easy, mess-free way to add glitter to your looks. But like, I like shimmer more than I do glitter. I'll just put it that way. But I am gonna take a little bit of lemon zest. <laughs> And just add a little pop of that on top of the gold because I think that would be kind of cute. Just to get the gold shadow we used earlier to like mix in with the green, you know, kind of like a little transition color. These surprisingly don't have a scent. All right, I'm going for my lashes. Wish me luck. Okay, now that the falsies are on, I'm ultimately here to tell you that I ain't playing with y'all anymore in 2018, okay? The one thing that I'm actually surprisingly the most excited about from this collection are the blushes. The blushes are Adorable, they're so cute. This is a strobing, oh, this is a bronzer? Okay, whatever. It's a strobing bronzer, so it's got a highlighter on one side. I don't know who the hell you bronze with that color because you sure as hell ain't bronzing me. You can probably bronze my teeth or the palms of my hands with that color, but you can't bronze my face. It's just not gonna happen. I do really like the packaging though, and the highlighter is cute. She seems really cute. You know what? You could probably actually get away with mixing. Oh, oh, I think you're, oh. I think maybe you're supposed to mix them. I don't know, but that is sickening. That is sickening. That reminds me a lot of the Becca highlighters. What I just did there, oh, that's freaking sick, man. Oh, that's gorgeous. The one blush that I was the most excited about, the blush duo that I was the most excited about was Plumagranate, because it's the darkest one, and it looks like it's the most, this just looks like a really fun color, but unfortunately she was wounded in battle. That is so gorgeous. It's very 80s. We have a peach themed one that sorta kinda smells like peaches. It's very soft though, it's very subtle. The, oh, <laughs> that's because it's not peach themed, idiot. This one is apricot in the act. That is such a, who, whoever came up with that pun's getting a raise. Good job team. When you mix them together, these are stunning. They've got two different textures. This one looks more satin and the highlighters are more metallic, but mixed together, they're freaking gorgeous. Okay, this one is a red, ooh, that's pretty. This one is cherry bomb. Lots of range in these blushes. I'm actually, Really surprised. I love a raspberry blush on my complexion. That's stunning. I'm so sorry. My Let me just clean my hand up, please. Let's do a swipe of both of those. Ooh. And then lastly, we have strawberry. Stro strawberry is like, you know, you're softer. I would say this is a soft pink it's a blue pink so this is a fun like barbie girl color and then there's also a banana cream setting powder in this collection i'm gonna take a bit of this and my mr right brush powder what the hell where's the powder where is the powder i'm gonna take okay you just have to kind of get through it first i think i guess i'm going to i'm gonna kind of use this as like a blur powder for under eye i like to do this sometimes with some setting powders as like a final step just to kind of smooth everything out. What do you guys think? Did you guys notice the difference? Did it blur my skin a little bit more? Give me the tea, let's chat in the comments. For my cheeks, I'm going to go with the apricot in the act, bro. First, I'm gonna try to see what the darker, ooh, it smells so good, oh my God. Once the brush like kicks up some product, that's so pretty. It's very soft though. And then it's also a little difficult with these dual ended products to really get in on one product, but you know, so far that's really pretty. Sometimes I like to add my blush to my bronzer to like warm up the skin and really kind of, I don't know, it's just, it's kind of like an old school makeup artist trick. There are two cream stick highlighting blushes in, or sorry, highlighter sticks, and this does smell really good. Ooh, wow. This is Strawberry Sparkle. These look very chunky and glittery, and you know, they actually, Oh, that one's much smoother, much better. Not really particular, that's beautiful, but I feel like this would be better used on the eyes. It's just a little glittery for me. Yeah, that's really pretty. I just don't know, would I use this on my cheek? Very little. And by very little, I mean that. And that's it. This surprised me. I, I actually kind of felt like I was gonna like strawberry lemonade better because the first one was just looking light girl like she was just looking like a real ultra light beam situation i'm gonna go back to the blush duo take a bit of the gold just a little bit just a very humble amount and i'm going to set that cream blush that's really pretty Too faced makes some of my favorite blush products i really really love the formula 
and the variety of blushes that they create. There's a Do You Fresh Glow setting spray in this collection and you guys know how I feel about Too Faced setting sprays. They are the GOAT. And I don't know why I don't have it. I don't know if it got accidentally thrown away. I don't know if it just wasn't sent. That was the one product that I was looking forward to the most. But then on Ulta, it said, add the spray for Ultra Do. And I'm like, I don't need that in my life. I just don't need that kind of negativity in my life in 2018. Maybe it's a blessing in disguise that they didn't send to me. <laughs> Last thing that I do have, oh, just kidding, sorry. This is such a huge collection. This video is gonna be long as hell. The camera does these no justice, but these are what looks like metallic, fun highlighter drops. Pretty self-explanatory. Ooh. Nah, this is gonna be a problem. If you are clumsy, be very careful with these. There's no stopper inside of this. So when you open it, it's just open season for this to spill. So just be mindful of that. I'm just gonna pour a drop and see. Oh, it's oh, it's literally glitter. Okay, that's cool. I mean, yeah, that's pretty. This is more something that I would wear to like a festival though. Like if it was glitter in like a metallic base, that'd be fine. But this is literally just glitter. It's okay, but she's not giving me like Jenny from the block glow. You know what I mean? Like I need shimmer in just a different format. Okay, this is pink lemonade. This one looks like a fun, duochrome orangey pink color. So maybe this one will give me a little bit more variety. Let's see. Nope, it just looks like straight up pink so far and neon pink at that. At least on camera, it looks neon pink. It does not look like that in person. These also have a little bit of a weird cooling sensation to them. Like, I don't know how to describe it, but it just feels cold when I put them on. Ooh, cause that one looks like it's close to my skin tone. Almost like, is she wearing glitter? I don't know, maybe she's just a unicorn or something. Let me see her birth certificate. Dang, where the hell my vein come from? Am I stressed out or something? Okay, so, so far of the two, I would prefer Pink Lemonade. Pink Lemonade is giving me a little bit more fun, a little bit more sexy, but these, I would say, aren't my favorite. Ah! I dropped it, I dropped it, I dropped it, man. But it didn't spill, it's cool, the top was on. Focus, focus, focus. Last thing that we have, are these glosses and oh, there's a lot of them. So far, cause I haven't tried them on. These remind me a lot of the lip glides from NARS. It's like, they're not really advertised as a lipstick, but they're not really a gloss either. It's kind of like a hybrid of both. So these are all of the comfort lip glazes swatched. Don't judge my arm hair. I'm out here trying to do the work of the Lord. Sometimes that means sacrificing shaving, all right. You know what? I'm totally gonna go for Yummy Rummy. I feel like a nice contoured 90s lip would go great with this look, so why not? Hopefully this won't be too, too glittery for the look, but let's see how it goes. Oh, it's very glittery. I think I would prefer to see this used as like a highlight on top of another lipstick, but you know, I think it kind of works. I think it works for this look though. Like I can feel the glitter, but it's not gritty, which is a good thing. Cause some glitter glosses are very gritty and rough girl. Like you take them off, you damn near exfoliated your top dermal layer. So that pretty much concludes the entire collection. I've tried everything. Things that surprised me was definitely these eye glitter things. I thought they were going to be chunky, uncooperative, uneducated unbelievable. I thought it was going to be all of the above. And I actually ended up kind of liking these. It may not be the product that I would reach for the most, but I do like it. I'm also not going to front. I thought that by now my base would be a hot, greasy, spent the day standing in the middle of Dubai asphalt for six hours. I thought it was going to be like that kind of look and feel, but you know, actually after wearing it before about two, it's taken me a long time to film this video. It actually still looks just as fresh as if I just put it on. So that's a plus. The highlighter drops, I felt like I could live without. I just feel like there's other products that I have that already do this, but in a more flattering way. The pink one was definitely cute though. I really like the highlighter sticks. You could probably do some really fun stuff with like your collarbone area. Favorite things from the collection, hands down, were definitely, definitely not this one, because you broke and trained it, honey. The blushes and the shadow palettes. The shadow palettes have a really beautiful arrangement of colors. I felt like they were pretty universally flattering. They're versatile. The lip glosses were nice, but it wasn't like a standout enough product for me to like go run out and get them. I think that Too Faced is one of, one of the best when it comes to lip products. This one was cool. I don't know. That's just my first initial impression, but people change their minds all the time. Sometimes I get something and I'm just like, eh, whatever, not that excited about it. And then six months down the line, I discovered again and it's like my favorite product. Who knows, that may or may not happen, but 
you know, I'm just not as excited about those as I am the other thing. I think that overall, this collection definitely is something that I would recommend to you guys, just because a lot of the products actually looked good. I like to see the variety of colors in this collection. The fact that there's something for people with deep skin, there's something for people with lighter skin. There literally is something for everyone. The colors are really fun. I love the fact that they're scent attached to most of what you see here. The only thing that I slightly kind of grapple with is the fact that this is just like a really random collection that I feel like really should have came out like four months ago. Like what is going, we, this is, this is not back to school makeup, okay, Jared? But honestly, a look is a look and I would still wear it, especially this green eyeshadow palette because I am giving you fall vibes. You cannot deny that I'm giving you fall vibes with this eyeshadow look. I'm gonna head out and try to check back in in at minimum five to six hours and that will give me like an eight hour wear day. So I will check back in a bit. It's check-in time. It is now just after, focus dang it, just after mid, well, actually closer, a little bit more closer to 1 a.m. I'm, I'm surprised that it's only this shiny. I thought it was going to be much worse and I also thought it was going to get to this point way sooner. I started my makeup at around, oh, I remember it was like 5.36. Honestly, I've never seen a dewy foundation be this long wearing, so I am pleasantly surprised. Right here, I am getting some accentuating of pores. There's just a different type of shine that some dewy foundations give me that I don't really care for and this is kind of, kind of doing that like around my forehead. I just feel like it's a little too shiny. Like it's a little, it's a little, it's, a little, it's looking a little whiteboard shiny. You feel me? I definitely feel like it held up a lot better than what I anticipated, but I'm gonna save this one for my dry normal ones, okay? Mind you, I haven't blotted a single time today. Let's go see what it looks like when I do blot. Okay, it's gonna hit my problem areas just so you, wow. It definitely is long wearing. It hasn't budged. It hasn't evaporated miraculously off my skin. That's a miracle. You know what? I'm. Kind of changing my mind the more that I look at it. <laughs> I think it's a great formula. I think it ended up having a beautiful finish. It's not really the most ideal for me, but if it was like uh, there and I had nothing else to use, I would definitely use it. And I think it would end up being a beautiful finish. Definitely could use some more shades in between toffee and mahogany and um, a, a few more shades after cocoa, especially since this is a foundation and not and not like a tinted moisturizer or anything like that. That's it, I'm going to bed, good night. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this review video. If you had a favorite product, please let me know down in the comments down below. But either way, I'm just grateful that you're here. So while you're here, while I've got your attention, just, you know the drill, man. Like, can you ever really just watch one Jackie Ina video? You know you have to watch like three minimum. Go ahead, go ahead, I'm waiting.